So I I want to I want to keep the conversation moving. This brings me to my next point. I had put a tweet up, guys, um, on Twitter, and I, I said I have a feeling. Call it a, a gut reaction. Call it whatever you want. But I said I had a feeling that Eric Bieniemy would be the next head coach of the of the Las Vegas Raiders, and a lot of people were in favor of that tweet. A lot of people agreed with what I said. But then you had some people who brought up his off the field. Um, issues from his past from his past guys and i say when it's past and i say it's past um and it seems to be that that seems to be like a an in, in, in a, a topic of discussion quite early and you know it's funny a lot of people hear stuff in the media and they just run with it they don't even know what they're talking about uh you know with me having various contacts inside the league i, I kind of know what sort of went down with the eric b enemy situation and why he isn't you know a head coach in the league or at least i feel like i have a very good uh, grasp of it, but a lot of people, other people are just talking and just saying things that just don't make sense to be completely honest with you. And some of the things that I've heard was he's a bad interviewer. That's the one thing I heard. He, he bombed one interview guys. Let's start there. He bombed one interview. Um, <laughs> another thing that I heard is he isn't a good speaker. Anybody who's ever listened to Eric B and me talk in an interview, he has literally blown you away with how, how how he how personal he gets with his players and how he understands his players, and then the next thing I hear is it's it's his off the field stuff, and I'm like, all right, so you mean to tell me we're judging someone, right? We're judging someone off of things that happened 10, 15, in some instances, 20 years ago. That seems really really shallow, and other things that I hear as well are. He doesn't call plays. That's another thing that I hear. Well, I got news for you. The other two assistants that came from under Andy Reid that are head coaches in the National Football League, well, one of them isn't, but one of them won a Super Bowl, didn't call plays either. Andy Reid has called, called plays everywhere that he's been. And if he didn't call plays where he was, uh, it was chances are because it was a preseason game or something like that. You know, ha- having the fact that my brother – uh, you, you know, was uh, dorm roommates with his with his son at, at um, Temple when we went to a, a great amount, great deal of Eagles games. And uh, he became very good, close friends with with uh, Reed's son as well. I can, I can assure you, Andy Reed has always called plays. He's always called plays where he was at. So those are those are a couple of things that I wanted to de- debunk right off the bat. But just jumping into it, we talk about how, you know, you can't be a, a head coach. And I see some people say that sometimes. You can't be a head coach and have off-the-field problems. Well, that brings up a lot of questions for me. So, Cody, uh, and, and, and Jake and Daniel and Aiden, I'm going to ask you guys some names. I mean, listen, I want, I want to know your initial thoughts of these players. And listen, this is not to out people. That's not what this is about. It's to prove, it's to debunk the Eric Bieniemy has off-the-field issues that's why he's not a head coach thing. So let's start. Mike Vrabel, what do you guys think of him? Decent, NFL, good NFL coach. Right? Good. Jake, not great, good. Mike Vrabel? Yeah. Good coach. Kyle Kyle Janian, what do you think of Kyle Janian? Elite coach. What do you think of Kyle Janian, Cody? Great coach. Oh, okay. Jim Harbaugh, you know, the coach that used to be, that took the, the Niners to multiple NFC championships. What do you guys think of him? Good? Good coach. <laughs> okay. John Gruden, Jay Gruden, right? You guys you guys know them. They've had success in the NFL. We we obviously just spoke about <laughs> John Gruden. But John Jay, John Gruden won two Super Bowls. Jay Gruden, Jay Gruden was the head coach of the Washington football team, now known as that. Um, all those people that I just named have an arrest record. All those people that I just named have an arrest record. And some of them multiple in instances. Multiple. And I have them for you. So, Jake, you don't have to research. I have them for you because I know you're probably doing this. Mike Rabel's last arrest was in 2011 for, th- for theft. He was arrested in 1990 for him and his friend jumping someone outside of a bar. Okay. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, multiple DUIs. John Gruden, another DUI. Jay Gruden, DUI. Kyle Shanahan, intoxicated, disorderly conduct. Are you guys getting the gist of what I'm saying? Player coaches should not be judged, right? Like one of the my favorite Bible scriptures that says, "Let who he with who without sin, you know, cast the first stone." You shouldn't be judging someone off of things that happened, 
you know, necessarily in their passing, but okay, that's a reason why they're not a head coach. Because at that point, and it always happens with Eric Bieniemy, and I take this very, very personal because to me, it, it seems like we're nitpicking. We're looking for the perfect candidate for a job. But when people say Eric Bieniemy has off the field issues, do we even know what that means? Okay, well, let's talk about it. Eric Bieniemy, he got arrested in 1988 for a bar fight where he fought a guy. And it seems like the guy got the better better of him, apparently. But he got arrested for disorderly conduct for fighting out in public. He then got arrested in 1990 for interfering with a firefighter trying to put out fire at his mom's home because it was something of value that his mom left inside and he wanted to grab it. <laughs> Keeping it going. He was arrested in 1990 for driving with a suspended license. With a suspended license. 1993, this is serious. He allegedly harassed a female parking attendant. No charges were ever filed. He was suspended from the university. Mind you, these were all when he was still a player. Uh, he was suspended for the university uh, for a year. Couldn't be on campus. And then in 2001, which was his last run-in with the law, he had a DUI. I, I bring all those up, guys, because I really want us to eliminate from our verbiage, oh, Eric Bieniemy has off-the-field issues, because I hear a lot of people say that a lot of time, and sometimes I feel like they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Listen, this man has been a part of, a focal point a part of, some of the best offenses we've seen in the NFL. Some of the best. His players love him. People rave about him. Other coaches rave about him. Did he bomb an interview? Yes. But when did he bomb that interview? Coming off of a Super Bowl. Let's be careful when we when we when we when we when we throw stones at people. Let's be careful when we just spew things that we hear other people say. Because the fact of the matter is, Eric Bieniemy is not a head coach because there are people probably that don't want Eric Bieniemy to be a bad coach and it seems like that's the easiest thing for the public to 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 you know to jump at. Jump at. The fact of the matter is, I personally believe the man should be a head coach in the National Football League. I personally believe we should cut the bullshit out, right, and call a spade a spade. At the end of the day, the National Football League has a long way to go. We've made strides. But we have a long way to go. There are there are two, three, three African American head coaches in the National Football League right now, and there's it's 32 jobs. There are people getting fired every single year for poor performances. Adam Gase. Adam Gase was a head coach in the National Football League. Not twice. once, twice. Twice. All right. Freddie Kitchens. You want to talk about that? Freddie Kitchens was a head coach in the National Football League. Okay. Josh McDaniels turned down multiple jobs in the National Football League, even one so where he had a team thinking he was going to sign there. Don't tell me about bombing interviews. If the man can coach, if the man's a player's coach, if the players believe in him, give him an opportunity. Let's stop with the bullshit. Cody, go ahead. Look, I mean, it again, you are who you can afford to be. I think Eric, Eric Bieniemy. look, the stuff that happened in his past, that has not stopped less qualified coaches from becoming coaches. I think Eric Bieniemy will be a head coach in this league if this offseason. There are going to be plenty of teams who get rid of their head coach, not just um, not just the Raiders. I think it would be a great fit in Chicago with Justin Fields. Um, I think he needs an fields needs an offensive minded coach. I think the enemy would be a great fit there. Um, that being said, you said it before it's an owner's league. It, it don't matter how good you are at your job. If you're, if that owner don't like you, don't worry about applying because you ain't going to get the gig anyway. Right. And that, and that's just how it is that I de like, it sucks that that's how, and a lot of these owners, and you can tell by the franchises are very, very bad at their jobs. They're very bad at their jobs, but hey, guess what? They got a lot of money. They get to make the decisions. It's typically how it goes in the real world. Welcome to it. But Shad Khan has made terrible decision after terrible decision after terrible decision since the Jaguars entered the NFL. Like there, there are franchises that will continually make bad decisions. I think not hiring Eric Bieniemy is a bad decision. That guess what? Bad owners will continue to make, and, and that's you know, their I, loss. I, we we didn't even get and, and Cody. I, I didn't even get into Jim Ursay's multiple DUIs, who's an owner. I didn't get Steve into Kime. Steve Kime, yep. who's a general manager, who yeah, no, is literally representing an organization 
So let's stop nitpicking. Let's stop the BS. Daniel, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think he deserves to be head coach. He's he's the offensive mind, and he's gotten interviews. So I think he deserves, and I think he will get a shot. I don't know if it's going to be this year. I don't know if it'll be next year. I, his track record shows he deserves a shot and should get a shot. But, like, at the same time, like, if you look at this past year, some of the hires, you know, Brandon Saley, I know he hired or interviewed for that job. Maybe the Chargers like Staley more. It's showing this year. Maybe the Lions just like Dan Campbell. I, he deserves a job, but I I understand some of the organizations where they go with certain head coaches. I, I'm specifically saying cause, because I know for a fact, right? I know for a fact that an organization was interested in him. And because they didn't like his answers, he even had his staff ready, just so you know. He even had his staff ready. It's because they didn't like his answers necessarily in that one interview. They held it against him. It's BS. And again, a lot of people talk. A lot of people talk. They don't know what they're talking about, though. 